You are listening to a Redeemed Christian Fellowship podcast produced by Hearing Heart Multimedia in Phoenix, Arizona. We hope this message is an encouragement to your faith and brings insight through the Word of God in your pursuit of God's perfect plan for your life. Please find us online and social media at Redeemed Christian Fellowship for additional broadcast and ministry resources. Hello, this is uh, Pastor Walter Martinez. Thank you uh, for joining our podcast today. Uh, uh, today I want to minister to along the line of those things that uh, interfere with our faith. They, they, uh, they're kind of enemies to our faith. Uh, they stop our faith from working. Uh, and a lot of people don't realize this, that there's certain things that come against our faith and don't allow our faith to to work correctly. Don't allow us to finish our faith journey, so to speak. I want to start in uh, Matthew's chapter 14. Uh, I'm going to start in verse uh, 24. It says, But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. Uh, That is, it was a contrary to the ship. It wasn't working on behalf of the ship or working like it was supposed to, I suppose. Uh, Verse 25 says, In in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went went unto them walking on the sea. And when uh, the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. And notice that they uh, notice how they responded to seeing Jesus walking on the water. Uh, they uh, they responded by well, they were they were bothered by it, obviously, and the, and and they they uh, because they thought it was a ghost, uh, and they cried out for fear. Uh, fear that is an opponent. To our faith, uh, faith and fear don't work together. Uh, it's like water and oil; they just don't mix. Um, and it's important for us to understand that we have to do more about dealing with fear um, in our lives and understand uh, the problems that it creates in our lives. Um, but then notice what happened here in verse 27. But Jesus. Uh, uh, spoke unto them but but straight away Jesus spoke unto them saying be of good cheer it is I be not afraid uh, this of course I'm reading out of the King James but uh, I can say be of good courage uh, it is I be not afraid so Jesus is speaking to him based upon that word uh, 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 be of good cheer or um, or take courage it is I just them knowing that it was Jesus and then he said be not afraid that was enough for them to combat fear so notice what Jesus says combats fear that's important because we can find what Jesus says in the promises of God's word uh, and and so we need to be more reliant on the promises of God's word because the Holy Ghost works with the word of God. His one of his functions, one of the functions of the Holy Ghost, is to bring uh, uh, manifestations to the word of God. Uh, verse twenty eight says, and Peter answered and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me to come out into the water. And Jesus said come. Again, notice, based upon what Jesus said. So, Peter is obeying what Jesus said. He's obeying, uh, uh, this is good. This is what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to do what Jesus said to do. And then it says, and it says, uh, and Peter said, I mean, and, and he said, that is Jesus said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the, out of the ship, He walked on the water to go to Jesus. Now notice, based upon that one word, come, 
he was empowered to break natural laws. This is a miraculous event. He walked on the water. Uh, boy, there's not anybody that I know that's ever walked on the water, except for Jesus, of course. Uh, but then there's also Peter. Now, there might be more, but I'm just not aware of it. Um, and then verse 30 says this, but when he saw the wind boisterous, notice that when he saw the wind boisterous, you can say it like this, when he saw the circumstances, um, uh, uh, it says he was afraid. Sometimes when we see things that go contrary to what we believe in God for, that is, what God has spoken to us, either through his word or spiritually from by the Holy Ghost. Um, when we see the circumstances and the threat that they are producing in our lives, we can become afraid. But remember what I said, fear and faith cannot work together. They're like water and oil. You can't mix them. Um, and it says, and when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. Notice what happened. He saw the wind boisterous and he began to sink. Boisterous just simply means he saw that the wind was increasing in strength. It was really strong. Um, but when he saw that, so now he's taken his eyes off of Jesus, and now he's put his eyes on the circumstances that are dictating to him he's going to drown, he's going to die. And he begins to think, think. why? Because, he, because the circumstances allowed fear to come in. So when we take our eyes off, what, off of what Jesus says, off of what the Word of God says, and we put our eyes on the circumstances, then that's an open door for fear. So you have to be careful of that. Be careful that you're not taking your eyes off of Jesus and what he said. Uh, because when you do, it opens a door to fear. Uh, it makes you afraid. Uh, and then so he cries out, Lord, save me. And of course, the Lord saved him. Thank God that the Lord will save us. But it's interesting. Well, let me go on. Um, and immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? <laughs> Boy, uh, notice, there's a lot here. Notice that Jesus said to him, so it's kind of like Jesus is reprimanding him, or even, or we could say, scolding him. Uh, and he's saying, uh, oh, you have little faith, why did you doubt? So fear, in the mind of Jesus, or in the eyes of Jesus, he's seen that as doubt. Doubt is another enemy produced by what? Fear. Why? Because fear has its own belief system. You can't believe God and you can't believe your circumstances at the same time. It's just not going to work. You have to decide what you're going to believe. You're either going to believe uh, and keep your eyes on Jesus and what he said to you, or you're going to keep your eyes on the circumstances and what they're saying to you. Because they're saying to you that you're not going to make it this time. They're saying to you that this is it. Uh, God's not going to deliver you this time. Well, you know, that's not true. Because uh, Jesus fully intended for Peter to complete his faith journey. See, G Peter started out okay. It was when Jesus said, come, uh, that's all Peter needed to get out of the ship and start walking on the water. That's incredible what Peter was able to do just based upon that one word. But then when you throw in that element of the circumstances that come in, then you've got to understand that changes the, dy the dynamics of things. If you begin to look at the circumstances and not look at what Jesus has said to you. 
don't take your eyes off of Jesus and don't take your eyes off, what he, off of what he said to you because it will cause problems in your life. You want to be able to finish your faith journey. You want to be able to start someplace and get to the end by faith. Now, yeah, if things go wrong, uh, you can cry out to God and he will deliver you. But, it, you know, uh, well, let me say it like this. Isn't it better that you complete your faith journey and just step out by faith and stay in faith no matter what is thrown at you? Knowing that God is your deliverer and knowing that if God called you to do something, he will make sure that you get through that faith journey based upon your faith on that one word that he gave you at the beginning. That's important. Uh, so he says, O oh, oh, oh thou of little faith, why didst thou doubt? And, he was, and when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Then they were all, then they were in the ship, and when they were in the ship, um, let me read that, and they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. Glory be to God, thank you, Lord Jesus. I want you to be able to, to see something here, that Jesus, based upon what Jesus is doing, because he's the one that said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Uh, so we're going to understand that uh, even though we can't see Christ with us physically, we've got to have that heart knowledge that he's always with us. And that when he speaks to us, that he's going to do uh, what he said he's going to do. He's going to allow us to finish uh, what he gave us to do by faith. But it takes faith. If you waver from that faith, uh, then you'll have problems uh, like Peter did. Now thank God that you know uh, Peter was delivered but he could have completed his faith journey and to me that is something that I strive for. I want to be able to finish what God gave me. When God says something to me when he says don't worry, I got these bills taken care of. Then I, I know that I know that I know by faith that he's got it taken care of. Now I obey the Holy Ghost, what the Holy Ghost gives me to do, but the bottom line is by faith I know that I know that I know the finances will come to do what God has spoken to me in my heart and he will bring it to pass. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory be to God. Uh, and so I just want you to see that there is things that hinder your faith. And, you know, consider this. Fear keeps a lot of people from completing their faith journey. There's a lot of people that never really see the promises of God like they're supposed to because fear uh, uh, becomes something that's hard to contend with, something that causes them to fail. Remember what I said. Fear has its own faith system. You're either going to believe what fear projects to you, or you're going to believe what God has said to you, either in His Word or by uh, the leadings and guidings and communication of the Holy Ghost. I, uh, I suggest, and I know you agree, that it's better to uh, adhere uh, and obey uh, what God has said to us and not be afraid, not let fear get in because fear cannot override your faith unless you let it. How does fear override your faith? Because you take your eyes off of Jesus and what he said and you put your eyes on the circumstances and what they're saying. So you're either going to believe what God said or you're going to believe what your circumstances say. The choice is yours. And I know most people don't want to believe what the circumstances said, says, but that's how the devil works and we've got to know that he is always wanting us to abandon our faith. But we don't have to. Let me read another portion of scripture to you. In Matthew chapter 8, 
in Matthew chapter 8. God is so good. Um, and now we're talking about those things that will keep our faith from functioning um, and will hinder our faith. Uh, and we need to be well aware of it. Now we, we've pinpointed fear uh, because it's one of the biggest uh, opponents to our faith. Uh, and and that in the eyes and the mind of Jesus, uh, when we start yielding to fear, start yielding to our circumstances, start believing what our circumstances are speaking to us and not what he has said to us, uh, he calls that doubt. And doubt then would be another uh, opponent to our faith. And so we have to be aware of that. So let's go to Romans, I mean, I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 8, starting at verse 23. It says this. It says this. And when he was entered into the ship, his disciples followed him, and behold, there arose a great tempest, that is a storm, in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with waves. But he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and, uh, and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. Now, I want you to see something, because uh, it's really important. Uh, they all get in the ship with Jesus. A storm arises, uh, and then uh, it got so bad that water started filling up the ship. Now that's a lot of water, that's a huge storm. That, that can be really terrifying to the physical senses and to the mind. Uh, except for this one thing, you have the assurance of your salvation in the boat with you. So, uh, so let me say this. Jesus is always, so to speak, allegorically, in the boat with you. In other words, he's always with you when you're going through difficult times and situations. He's always with you. Um, but notice that they began to look at the circumstances. And they began to look at what the circumstances was telling them. <laughs> and that's important. Um, and notice what verse uh, right, 24 says again. And behold, there was an and then behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and woke him, saying, Lord, save us. Uh, we perish. Uh, can, you, can you see that fear had something to do with this? Uh, let's look at... Uh, Let's look at, because they thought they were going to die, is what they're saying. Don't you care that we're going to die? <laughs> we're, we're, obviously, that's a good natural response, but it's not a response based upon the knowledge of knowing that Christ is with you, no matter what you go through, no matter how bad your situation is. Christ will never leave you nor forsake you. You must know that. You must trust that. Um, in verse 26 says, and he said, this is Jesus talking, and he said unto them, why are ye fearful? Again, we can see that they were given in the fear. As I said before, fear has its own belief system. Uh, and fear is produced, or is an open door, uh, uh, well, let me say it like this, your circumstances is an open door to fear. And because they were looking at they had taken their eyes off of Jesus, who was in the ship with them, asleep, but he was still there. Uh, and they took their eyes off of him, and all of a sudden, they're putting their eyes on the storm that arose, and that was sinking the ship. And instead of doing something about it themselves, that Jesus had taught them to do, they had been walking with Jesus, they knew how faith worked, but they chose, or maybe didn't choose, but 
they were enticed uh, uh, to believe the circumstances and not the delivering power of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so Jesus said, uh, Why are ye so fearful, O ye of little faith? We see this term again, O ye of little faith. And this concept of, Why are ye so fearful? And then he arose and rebuked the wind and the sea, uh, and, and the sea, and there was a great calm. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him. Father God in Jesus' name. Uh, can you see again how fear is, and why we say fear is one of the biggest opponents to our, our faith? Next in line is doubt. Unbelief falls into that category as well. Let me take you very quickly before I run out of time. Let me take you to Mark chapter 6. Mark chapter 6. We're talking about those uh, opponents to our faith, those things that come against our faith and keep us from inheriting or possessing the promises of God. Um, in Mark chapter 6, I'm going to start in verse 1. It says this, And he went out from thence and came into his own country, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogues. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, From hence hath this man these things. And what wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hand? Now, here is people, he's come to his own country, to his own neighborhood, so to speak, and he runs into people that know him, know his family, uh, and they're kind of baffled by the fact that, you know, uh, that God could use him in such a powerful way, and such mighty works are done by his hands. So they do know that. But then they start to critique and criticize. They're jealous, uh, I, I suppose you could say. Um, but in verse 3 it says, this is the townspeople, they're saying, um, they're saying, um, is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James, and, and, and jo Joseph, and of Judah, and of Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. Notice that he came into town uh, ready to minister to his own uh, relatives, to his own neighbors, to his people that grew up around him. But yet all they could see was not a deliverer. All they could see was a carpenter. All they could see was a, somebody that they grew up in their midst and that offended them that God was using them in such a mighty way so offense then becomes another hindrance to our faith it becomes another opponent to our faith be careful that you don't walk in offense towards those that God is using because if you do it can affect what God is doing in your life. Why do I say that? Let's look at verse 4 of the same chapter. It says, And Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country, and among his own kin, and in his own house. He's saying, they a prophet. So he calls himself a prophet. And he's saying, A prophet um, is not without honor. Uh, but in his own country. In other words, a prophet is honored everywhere except for in his own country, among his own kin, in his own house. Isn't it funny that we can now see an element of familiarity come into play here? They're offended 
because they know him. But Jesus immediately says that, hey, a prophet is not honored in his own country, among his own kin, and in his own house. Can you see that they were supposed to be honoring the anointing upon his life, but they were too stuck on a person that God had anointed. Even though Jesus was God incarnate, understand that they could just view him as a man. They grew up amongst him, and they would not honor the anointing upon his life. And verse 5 says, And he could there do no mighty works. Because they failed to honor the anointing upon his life, he couldn't do any mighty works. People, uh, offense is a big problem in the body of Christ today. We can't be offended at God, the people that God chooses to use and anoints. You, you can't just look at them and say, you know, they're no better than I am. It's, it's not that they're better than you. It's that God has anointed them to do something in his service. And that's what you're honoring. You're honoring the anointing on that person's life. So don't get confused. Because if you do, then that person that God has anointed uh, uh, will not be able to help you. At least not much. And so you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot if you're offended at, at God's anointed. <laughs> Again, verse 5 says, He could there do no mighty works, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and he healed them. And notice what he says in verse 6. And he marveled because of their unbelief. And he went around about the villages teaching. Notice, he marveled. That's an amazing thing for Jesus to marvel. And, but he called their offense unbelief. That's important. See, because a lot of things that we experience, we don't realize uh, uh, the effect that it's having on us. Uh, uh, when you're offended, you're in unbelief. When you're offended of God's people, that God is using, that God is anointed to help you, like a pastor, a teacher, that you know they're, they're operating under that anointing and you're offended at them uh, because you confuse the man with the anointing. Don't confuse the man or the woman with the anointing. Know that they're anointed and honor the anointing. And God will bless you every time. And uh, then they'll be able to function in an anointing and bless you mightily and greatly. And notice that how do you correct this problem of offense and unbelief? Well, you teach. And that's what Jesus did. When he could have been doing miracles, he had to go back to teaching because they wouldn't receive him as their deliverer. Open the door to the anointing by honoring those people that God has anointed that you come in contact with or that God has put in your life. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Thank you so much. Um, I've run out of time. I wish I could go further. But hopefully I've given you enough to get you to understand that there is opponents to your faith. Please learn to identify them and deal with them so they don't interfere with what God wants to do in your life. Because you need a miracle in your life today. God bless you.